Hello, welcome back to the I Feel Like Rhyming Podcast. This is Kev Mack here, and this is the coolest podcast you've never heard. Welcome back to the fireplace. We're discussing a special topic today, one that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, one of the biggest artists and groups from when I was really growing into hip hop and starting to realize this is the music I love and I want to listen to, you know, for the rest of my life. But seriously, I mean, uh, these were the artists who, you know, Biggie and Tupac obviously were in my younger years. The biggest influences on me, especially Biggie. Uh, that's how I started listening to rap. Uh, Life After Death, The Puff Daddy, No Way Out CD, Mace's Harlem World. You know, that's what broke me into the hip hop industry in the world. But, um, you know, these artists, since sustained it and you know I stopped listening to all other forms of music really I, I don't I don't listen to much of that emo punk rock anymore still a little bit I get you know down in the dumps and I'll pop on some emo but not too much anymore um, and it's because of artists like these the 50 cents and the G units and that's who we'll be talking about today is the rise and fall of G units now, uh, G-Units really was around in the New York streets with them making mixtapes. They were, before I even knew about them, I'll admit, they had put out already, you know, um, at least two or three mixtapes or more. I think they had started the G-Unit radio series. They had, um, damn, I forget. They had a couple good mixtapes and everything. Um, and then comes 50 cents get rich or die trying cd it explodes it's 10 times platinum it's the biggest cd i remember since all eyes on me by tupac i mean i remember getting to school you know thinking i was one of the first to hear the album and they someone was playing it on a boom box in the hallways of gilbert and uh, we were playing it the whole way to our basketball game. We had an away game that day and we were blaring it on the bus. Everyone's singing every song already. It's been one day out and everyone knows the lyrics to like every song and it, it was just a huge album. And then, you know, that introduced G-Unit, which was Lloyd Banks and at the time Tony Yeo was in prison. So they got Young Buck to replace uh, Tony Ayo for the time being. Uh, the old mixtapes um, had, you know, 50 Cent Tony Ayo and Lloyd Banks. It's really bothering me. I know the name. It's, they had 50 Cent in the title of the name. Uh, they had the songs like Life's on the Line and things like that. And, you know, they were making great music before, but once. Get Rich or Die Trying came out, they were the biggest group on the planet at that time. And uh, I mean, if they stuck together until now, so they I think they'd be bigger than Migos. They would be the biggest group on the planet still. But there's, there's troubles and trials and tribulations that brought them to the fall part of their career. Um, so they rose up with Beg for Mercy was their first album, which was, once again, I think that's a classic album. I put that in my classic albums right next to like the Carter Three, like the newer age of classic albums. Beg for Mercy by g is definitely a classic. We used to play that on Friday, Saturday nights, or whenever we would go out pretty much every night of the week in high school. And we just play Beg for Mercy on repeat and repeat and repeat. I've never listened to the same songs over so many times. But it was just that good that you actually could. You, you actually wanted to keep listening to the CD. I'd go out and party to it all night and then listen to it again the next day. And I just, I couldn't get enough. Lloyd Banks had like the raspy delivery like Jada Kiss, but even kind of quieter. But he's so lyrical, just uh, one of the best freestyles ever to this day freestylers to this day, um, one of the most respected lyricists uh, just all around, just in the way he used his uh, metaphors and everything, uh, you know, so light sentences, you know, how it's hot.
how they all like the summer or something. That's that's what Lloyd Banks was good at, kind of like a Cassidy. I feel like they're really good at uh, using describing things and just telling a story or whatever. Lloyd Banks could do it all. So he was definitely the lyrical component. Then you had Young Buck brought in as the southern rapper component that uh, you know was like a loose cannon. Uh, he could rap though and just his style and delivery it's just you you wanted to listen to more of him he just made you feel like you were in in tennessee slinging hard or something you know he was he really was a vivid image portrayer in his in his raps so i never really liked tony ayo that much he had that one verse where he rapped as cocaine and that was always the sickest verse and everything, but I never really liked him before. So this this young Buck Lloyd Banks and 50 Cent uh, version of G Unit was better for me. And um, so after Beg for Mercy, their huge, the biggest ever, they put out singles, music videos. You have G Unit clothing line came out, G Unit shoes. Everyone was wearing the headbands and shit. Everything said G Unit, the sweaters. Everything was G-Unit for a while, you know, we'd say G-Unit all the time. We'd call our group of friends, was like, good unit. Everyone was doing the G-Unit, you know, and then turned into G-Unit. The game did that when he was dissing them. But that's, the game really didn't bring their fallout, but that would be their first, I guess, uh, wrong turn they hired the game to be their west coast component the game rocked with them for a little bit never put out an album with them or anything did a few songs and as soon as he was here he was he was gone he uh put out the documentary a classic album also sold i think it's upwards of 10 million 11 million now he did songs with 50 cent on that hate it or love it whatever and then they fell out 50 cent claimed he wrote all the hooks and this and that the game didn't deny that he wrote a couple hooks but obviously the game wrote all his raps for the rest of the album and they had a huge beef the game dropped stop snitch and stop lying a dvd aimed at g unit where he went to connecticut and went outside 50 cent's house and waited for him and I remember he sprayed G U not in one of the speed limit signs and we'd always go drive by and try to catch the speed limit sign that said G U not on it. We'd always put stickers, G U not stickers everywhere. I got the t-shirt, I wore that shit till it was faded up. It was a black t-shirt that said G U not. By the time I finished wearing that it was just faded to shit. It almost looked white. I wore it so much. Uh, I just, I love the game. I fell in love with his rap style, just everything about the game never sound, sounded like no one I'd ever heard from Compton and the West Coast in general. Just like Young Buck, it sounded like no one had ever heard from the South. He was so lyrical and his rap style was so much different. Like it was, before that it was just like Ludacris and T.I. I was impressed with from the South and maybe Outkast obviously. And, and that was it, and I liked Young Jeezy, uh, but there weren't many from the South. I was just proud of New York, East Coast, Northern rap supporter. Uh, but that changed, I went to the West Coast a lot with, you know, I'd always liked, you know, Snoop Dogg, Dre, obviously, he's not a pure rapper, but I like some West Coast stuff, and uh, I like Ice Cube. But the game was really the big one I liked from the West Coast and still to this day he's like my second favorite rapper after Joe Buzz. So the game is, you know, I followed his side to GU Not and uh, even though I still consider Young Bucket as one of my favorite rappers all around to this day and Lloyd Banks I consider one of the best lyricists of all time. I mean ever since the game left I did kind of start fading away from G Unit. And it did have a big impact because I think a lot of people started to fade away from G Unit after the game left. Uh, things started to get rocky for G Unit. Their next album there didn't sell as much. Tony Ayo had come out of jail and Tony Ayo had started rapping with him again. And I just think he was kind of seen as the weakest link. I mean, his voice is kind of cool and stuff. I just, 
I don't think he was that appealing to most people. I mean, many may disagree, but I think Tony Ayo was the weakest link. Um, and I just think they were already on their decline and downfall. They never sold as much as Beg for Mercy and the Get Rich or Dry Try in years. Um, it was just downhill after that. 50 Cent took on beats with everyone. He was beefing with Ja Rule so hard that since Ja Rule did a song with Fat Joe and Jada Kiss, New York, New York, that's a dope song. It's an awesome song. I'm from New York. That song, to this day when that comes on, you just want to fucking party it up right there. So that's a great song, but 50 Cent decided to beef with all of New York. And that's why Charlemagne the God claims him uh, gives him the credit for New York not being the mecca and biggest part of rap anymore because 50 Cent ruined it by beefing with Jada Kiss and the whole D block and uh, you know Nas, Fat Joe, everyone he was beefing with, Shine, everyone from New York too so he didn't understand why he dismantled New York like that like it wasn't like in the past all New York rappers would seem to work together and want to you know work as a team to become the biggest area of hip-hop but now it was everyone was against each other and battling each other Nas and Jay-Z separating more people so I mean 50 Cent really started that beefing with everyone and that just you know further rolled the ball to his demise I mean when he beefed with Jadakiss D-Block they put out Problem Child and with Styles and uh Jada, and then Jada had that first freestyle though, it was like something about the massacre, it was called the man, because 50 second album was the massacre, but Jada kissed his first freestyle there, it's like two and a half minutes long where he just raps and just kills 50 and he destroyed him, everyone was playing those D-block disses to him, and it just became, you know, everyone from New York, everyone's fucking with Jada and the lot, everyone likes them. It's hard to win a beef with them, even as big as 50 Cent and G and it was. And uh, they didn't win the beef with them, really, I think. I think most people saw at least a song and bars-wise and lyrics-wise, uh, musically, they lost that beef pretty badly. Like the, the deep block disc songs were way harder than anything 50 Cent or Gene had said back. So he lost that beat, and then he didn't really destroy Fat Joe at all. Fat Joe still puts out huge smash hit singles. He doesn't sell anything on albums, but fuck it, he just puts out platinum singles all day, so why not? Um, he didn't really destroy him, and then he went at Rick Ross. He didn't destroy Rick Ross at all. He's still got a huge career, too. Like, the games had a great 10 plus year, better musical career than all of G Unit and 50 Cent. Combined, almost. Maybe not combined, but he has a great flourishing music career, while none of them have really a career, at least in music, left. Uh, Rick Ross does too. Rick Ross won the beat fine, and 50 Cent put out like a public porn tape with Rick Ross's baby mama, and that became a freaking lawsuit and he lost the lawsuit and had to pay Rick Ross's baby mama uh, seven million dollars I think for that tape so that's when he declared bankruptcy and you know and Gordy had to say he wasn't a gangster he's a businessman and he's bankrupt he spent all his money he lost his house in Connecticut the Mike Tyson mansion it was like 12 million it was like the biggest house Fucking ever had 27 bathrooms, they threw huge parties. I know a colleague of mine at Fox Connecticut when I edited there and did the news packages. She was an intern for G Unit and Shady Records, she said, and she went to a party at 50 Cent's Mansion in Connecticut and she said it was just huge. Everyone was there musically, like Justin Timberlake, Eminem, all sorts of people. And they bust in girls from Boston and Rhode Island. And Literally in buses, people swaying from the ceiling, girls. It's a crazy party, she said, but all that was, was gone. He was declaring bankruptcy in court, loses his house, all that. And I don't know what happened to the vitamin water deal money, but and, uh, and he obviously isn't bankrupt. He's richer than any of us can imagine, but you claim bankrupt, so maybe you don't have to pay it back. But. 
didn't work. So 50 cents, losing all these beefs. They're all taking little chinks like the piece of statue. They're all chinking off of him, you know, and he's getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And G Unit's albums, you know, yeah, G Unit Radio, they were huge mixtapes, you know, like I said before, 50 Cent's first album, G Unit already made a name as the best mixtape artists around. And they kept that up, they kept up G Unit Radio, I remember it was at least up to part 26 or whatever. But um, they just weren't selling or making a buzz musically anymore, and they tried to pick up Mob Deep and that. Mob Deep even got G Unit tattooed on their hands. And then they left disgruntled. They picked up Murder Mace. Murder Mace, he actually put out a good mixtape, a few good songs for G Unit, so I'm happy. You know, this all gave me good music. The D Rock disses to 50 Cent, well, thank God those were made. They're great songs. I mean, Mace made some good songs. They made some good songs with Mob Deep. Who else was on? Spider Loke? My God, I forgot about that. Uh, the game just in too. Yeah, Spider Love was on there and failed. They were just seemed to be bringing in all these artists and going away. And you know, I feel like they had they have Kid Kid now. A recent one was Kid Kid, and I think he's gone now too. I know he's gone now too. So everyone's leaving G Unit. It's not a thing that makes your career. I remember Uncle Murdo was supposed to be on G Unit and. He was for a little bit, and now I think he's off. And I think he did an interview saying I'm 50 cents not that good of a businessman taking care of his artists that he signs to G Unit. I don't think. I think by his track record, that makes sense. By how many artists get on G Unit and leave, which is pretty much every one. And that now in the later years included Lloyd Banks. Lloyd Banks. You know, sent out a tweet saying he was retiring. He, knew he was retiring from music, never to make music again. He thanked all his fans. And, you know, I think he wanted to just get off G Unit Records, just separate himself from G Unit, because just recently he performed in Connecticut, so he's obviously performing again. I don't know if maybe he's just not making new music. I heard rumblings he was going to make a new album, but. I don't know if he's on a record label, obviously. I think he dropped from G Unit Records, and so maybe he's a free agent. Maybe he'll do the independent route. But Lloyd Banks, you know, 50 Cent and Tony Ayo, and Lloyd Banks are like childhood friends. The rest of these people he met later in life. But these three are childhood friends, and, you know, Lloyd Banks is saying he's retiring just so he can leave and get out of there. And 50 Cent was clowning Tony Yeo all the time. He even he, there's that YouTube video where he was playing, like pushing Tony Yeo to the ground, and he had him in a chokehold forever. He was choking him out and making Tony Yeo tap out and stuff. And that was a big thing brought up in a radio interview. And Tony Yeo was, you know, saying fuck 50 Cent and this and that. And uh, 50 Cent was just dismissing it as not a big deal. But obviously that caused some tension and problems. And then of course the Young Buck, Young Buck and 50 Cent's issues have been long, long time since the beginning. You know, um, I remember he rapped on that song, he's a seven figure dude and ain't seen a royalty check yet. Apparently he never saw many royalty checks because, or 50 Cent said later in an interview that he didn't do his, handle his money well and he was practically broke when tax season came around and you didn't realize all the shows and everything, tax isn't taken out of that money you get paid. So you gotta save some to the side because you have to pay taxes when tax season comes up. And Young Buck didn't realize that, so then tax season comes up, Young Buck owes 325,000, he says, and he doesn't have a dime, practically. He has pennies, so he can't pay 325,000. So he asked 50 Cent for the money, and he gave it, 50 Cent said he gave it to him, and then he kept calling him and asking him, and he said he'd get emotional and this and that, and that's when 50 Cent recorded one of the conversations, a voicemail or something, and where Young Buck is crying and asking for money and saying this and that is fucked up. It's a long taped voicemail. You can still listen to it. And um, so 50 Cent put out that, that message to the world saying he's done, he's not giving him another dime, he's done fucking with him and he's off G-Unit. So 
kick him up to unit, reveal the tape of him crying, all that. Young Buck starts putting out diss tracks. There's one with the tape combo in the intro. So Young Buck, and he put out some good diss tracks to him, I thought. But, you know, those weren't that well conceived as much. Young Buck didn't, or they weren't well received, I should say, not conceived. They were, they were well made. I thought they were good, but let's just say most people didn't take the Young Buck side on that one because of the crying conversations. 50 Cent maybe won that one. He clowned him like he seemed to do with Tony Yayo by choking him, and there must have been something going on with Lloyd Banks didn't like for him to retire and get out. So now Young Buck's out too, um, and they kind of went dormant and disappeared altogether for a while. I know G-Unit clothing went out of business, the shoes, everything's going out of business. And this group that was the biggest thing in the world at one time, literally, were the biggest rap group in the world, selling 10 million plus 50 cents album as Diamond. I mean, they're just, you know, Beg for Mercy's huge. They're making huge, performing at huge venues, making huge music videos, going crazy tours, wherever, whatever. They're doing it all. And then they fall from the top of the world, you know, fall from grace down to the freaking floor. They hit the bottom, they hit rock bottom, and they're gone. They disappear. And then they come back up recently with, you know, the same group together. Young Buck's back on there with Tony Ayo. Kid Kid, I think, is in it at this time. Uh, and Lloyd Banks, I think, is still in it when they came back this time. But Young Buck, apparently, I didn't even know this till recently, but Young Buck got caught with a transvestite or something. And, um, you know, it's not to each his own, not a big deal, but to many in the rap community, it was. And I guess 50 Cent clowned him and made fun of him in a radio interview for it. And, uh, you know, Young Buck got really upset and pissed off and everything. And this is after they had released, like, The Beast. They released some good EPs. And it seemed like they were making a little bit of more noise and people were listening to their music a little bit again. So they maybe could make another rise to power. But Young Buck sues 50 Cent for defamation of character. You know, he probably hasn't been making much money. I don't know if he's been getting ripped off or not paid right. I don't know that aspect, but he obviously needs money because he sues 50 Cent for making fun of him in a radio interview about the transvestite. I didn't even think you could. I thought that's freedom of speech. I didn't think you could sue someone. I guess if it is hurts his character and everything, it is defamation of character. So I guess he could do that with a good lawyer and maybe win. But, you know, Young Buck did that to himself, you know, by making those choices and everything. And whoever caught him and put it out and published it, probably TMZ or something, whoever published it to the world is really the one he should be suing for defamation of character. Not 50 Cent, but he was just laughing at it. Like, you probably have to sue everyone in the world if you're going to sue people who are going to laugh at you um, every time for making mistakes. But, you know, Young Buck sues 50 Cent for defamation of character. And now, recently, what made me want to watch this, make this video is seeing a radio interview with Tony Yeo where they talked about Young Buck had got caught now with a recorded phone conversation with the same transvestite. They are talking about their relationship and this and that and, you know, keeping it private and, oh my god, oh no, say it ain't so, Young Buck. My favorite rapper, one of my favorite rappers. I love Young Buck's music, straight out of Cashville and and that's another thing, during this whole time, Lloyd Banks had put out The Hunger For More, which is up there as a classic. I think The Hunger For More is a classic in my eyes. One of my favorite albums of all time. And Straight Out of Cashville by Young Buck, one of my favorite albums of all time. A classic also. I think both of those albums are classics. Young Buck's second was a little not as good. Um, what's the name? Um, hmm. I forget the name of the second one. Uh, I'll have to write it down here, but uh, 
you know, it's not quite as good, but still good. Just like Lloyd Bank's second album, The Hunger For More 2, was, you know, pretty good. Not nearly as good as The Hunger For More. Definitely a disappointment there. That was definitely on the downfall of all their music. Uh, Tony Yeo's album, Thoughts of a Predicate Felon, I didn't think that was good at all, but, you know, each their own. But Young Buck was always one of my favorite rappers, so to see him get caught up in this controversy, I mean, that's what he likes, that's what he likes. I'm not gonna doubt anyone for the, any of their choices I've made. Mistakes or things that people want to approve of or what, whatever, it's to each their own. So that's, that's not what I'm upset about. I mean, I'm just upset that they're all clowning him and making it, making it with Tony Ayo was clowning him in the interview and getting caught a second time on phone conversation and that coming out just recently while he's trying to sue 50 Cent. So it's, you know, it's like, now is he going to sue Tony Ayo too? I don't know. But it seems like Young Buck's, you know, out of the group now for good. I don't think he's going to be coming back once you sue one of the members. Once you got a lawsuit going on in one of the members, I don't think you can come back. I think you're pretty much, it's fair to say you're gone and everything. And, you know, he'll still say one of my favorite rappers. I don't care about these controversies and everything. Like I said, it's each his own. His choices are his choices. I'm not going to clown him here, I'm going to support him, Young Buck's still the man, so is Lloyd Banks, still the man, so, I mean, I guess Tony Ayo and 50 Cent are cool now, from the interview, that's what I got from Tony Ayo, that they're back cool again, but I'm, as far as I know, I, Lloyd Banks isn't back with the group, I mean, he's still doing his own thing independently. I know he's performing. I just saw he performed in Connecticut and Waterbury or Hartford. Um, so he's obviously back doing his, his music thing. And I mean, it's just crazy to think. I want to do this video because it's just so crazy to see. 50 Cent doesn't even really make music anymore. He tried to let get the strap. It's not very good. Um, but he just, I don't even know if G-Unit Records, I don't think that exists anymore. 50 Cent's just doing Power is a great show, my favorite show. Like, literally my favorite show on TV, I mean, Power is a great show. So apparently he's doing more, he's already in the works for a spinoff to Power, which is awesome. I wonder who it'll be. Uh, hopefully, if I can tell me, that'll be awesome. But, uh, no, I think it's supposed to be Kanan. No, oh, that's even better. So 50 Cent's doing his acting thing, his TV shows, his movies, he's making money over there. Whatever, he's got to pay back Rick Ross's baby mama, so let him do that. So whatever, he's probably making more money there, he doesn't need music anymore as much. I don't think he's too concerned with it, he's not in you know, too much of a rush to do anything more. So I think we're just gonna, oh, we got all the G-Unit music we're ever gonna get. Their latest EPs before this latest breakup were actually really good. Like The Beast is the only one, The Beast EP is the only one I can think of off the top of my head, but that was actually really good. So they still could do some good music is why it kind of upsets me is that if they stayed together, I feel like they'd be the biggest group on earth right now. I think they'd be bigger than Migos. I think they would have steadily increased if they just didn't let any troubles get between them and just made mu music and made money but all the best bands break up just like Guns N' Roses uh, you know I don't know what other good bands break up I think it's just broke up uh, Guns N' Roses I don't think Motley Crue did the Eagles uh, the Beatles uh, and a lot of bands break up, but, you know, and a lot of groups do too, and rap, it's a common thing where people, as they get more money and power and fame, it goes to their head, or this or that, they want more money, more of this, more of that, and, you know, they're jealous of their friends, that like, oh, is he getting more than me, blah, 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 why is he getting more, I should get more, I did this, he didn't do that, and that could probably happen, you know, maybe they were jealous of 50 Cent was like the leader, kind of, or the most popular one, and maybe Lloyd Banks or 
uh, young buck or Tony Ayo didn't see it that way. So, and you know, they just wanted to go their separate ways and try. It's just like Kyrie wanted to leave LeBron. You know, sometimes you want to leave, leave the king and make your own thing and lead your own team. You know, show that you can be a huge success on your own. And Kyrie's doing that, and I guess you know. Young Buck was trying that. He puts out some good mixtapes still. Those 10 bricks, 10 pounds, all those 10 mixtapes Young Buck's doing are all real good. So definitely check out all that Young Buck stuff. He's he's an awesome artist and just a great artist, I think. No matter what is going on in his life, I, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm good. Um, you know, he's not R. Kelly. I can't stand with R. Kelly. That interview was crazy, okay? R. Kelly is a wild, crazy madman who needs to be locked away for life. He doesn't see what he did was wrong. I need to put R. Kelly away and lock the key. He is just, just a child molester, a pedophile, and probably a rapist, so... I think that Gail King interview proved that, but... Anyways... <clears throat> Yeah, I'm gonna keep rocking with Young Buck and Lloyd Banks. Never really rock with Tony Ayo. I'm gonna try Kid Kid out because I he's actually pretty good. I like Kid Kid a lot, so I'm gonna start to listen to more of his music. But and go back listen. I'm sure you've listened to Get Richard I Trying, but listen to Beg for Mercy by G Unit. Their second album wasn't that great, but it was still all right. You could listen to the second album. It's it's all right. It's like a C plus. But check out some of uh, G Unit's old music, the mixtapes, especially the G Unit radios and all that. That was like I couldn't wait for G Unit radios to come out on that pit or whatever. I'd be looking and oh shit, a new G Unit radio came out. We burned to a CD, you know, burning up a line wire to a CDR, downloading each individual song. A lot of you kids don't remember anything about that. But that's how you used to have to do it in my day. You used to have to download each song one by one and put it on a CD. And play it on a shitty Walkman where if I get a bump in the car or something, your song's gonna skip. But you're gonna accept it and you're gonna love it. And that's how it is. But not anymore. Now, you just search for G Unit and enjoy their, the primes of their career before such a crazy and I would never have predicted their fall would be so fast and wild and all over the place. They were on top of the world, you never predicted they'd fall so hard. But some of the great ones do. Alright, this has been the I Feel Like Rhyming Podcast. This is Kev Mack here. And uh, thank you all for watching so much. I love you all. Keep checking back every single day. There'll be new videos up. There's going to be a new vlog coming up with the, uh, my Biggie Smalls tattoo vlog. That's a sneak peek of it. And uh, check out for tomorrow the best diss tracks and beefs and hip hop of all time. All right. Subscribe, like, comment. This is the I Feel Like Rhyming Podcast. This is Kev Mack. I'm rhyming out. Rhyming out, I feel like checking out. Peace.